There may be claps, but no handshake between the two warring sides. After a week of talks in Saudi Arabia, Sudan's army and paramilitary rapid support forces make a first step towards helping their country's population. We affirm our commitment to ensuring the protection of civilians at all times, including by allowing safe passage for civilians to leave areas of active hostilities on a voluntary basis in the direction of their choice. But while the delivery of humanitarian aid was top of the agenda, an actual end to hostilities still seems far away. Their declaration promises to discuss a potential ceasefire, but one that would only last for around 10 days. None of the ceasefires have lasted since the fighting began on the 15th of April, and many civilians are now struggling to access enough food and medical care. It's a hunt. It's like you live in a jungle and you go outside to hunt for your prey. Sometimes you would go with the list that you need for the house, you will end up getting half of that list. Petrol stations are all empty. The only petrol we can get is sold on the black market. A gallon used to cost 2,800 Sudanese pounds. It's now 35 or 40,000. Almost a million people have had to flee their homes, but for some, the move is just too dangerous as the two warring sides fight for power following the collapse of a transitional government. 750 people have been killed and in a country where part of the population already depended on aid. The UN's World Food Programme says that a further two and a half million people are expected to slip into hunger.